Okay, no more playing around. We're gonna take these motors, spin them around really fast, and see what happens to the propeller hubs. This is gonna be really crazy, probably. I broke my first ND filter. Oh shoot, oh shoot, oh dang it. Oh, I just got a little bit better today. I'm not sure though, cause I'm not a scientist. Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. In this video, we're gonna talk about these 3D printed propeller hubs that I made, so that way you can reuse broken quadcopter pro propellers and have folding propellers on your five inch quadcopter. Now, in, our in my previous video, we talked about these. I showed you the design, kind of the design process, and they do, in fact, work but I wanted to improve them and make them better. So in this video, we're gonna be going over three different types of filaments that I've used to print another batch. And I've made a few design changes and stuff. So let's talk about those and then we'll get out there, put these babies on a quadcopter and start flying. If you wanna just jump straight to that, check the description below. We'll see what happens. We don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen. It's gonna be crazy. Let's get started. So I did a bunch of printing and I don't know where's a good spot to put in a 3D printing montage. So here's a 3D printing montage. Look at all of these propeller hubs, or propeller hub halves to be more specific. We have three different types of filament that I'm trying out here. We have Sunlu PLA Plus. This is the white filament and it didn't work out super great. I don't really like it. It is of pretty low quality and I just wasn't having very good success with it for now anyway. And we have the 3D Fuel uh, Pro PLA and this is in the black and this turned out just fantastic, especially the on the CR-10. The CR-10 made it look great. We'll talk about why in a minute. And also from 3D Fuel, we have the Workday PLA, and this is the, uh, what do they call this? Clearly Natural, Clearly Natural PLA is what they call this. And I am loving this stuff. This stuff in particular was very fun to print and I think it turned out very well, probably the best out of all of these. And honestly, I'm looking forward to testing these the most. These are actually clear and they look great. This is the Sunlu PLA Plus. I don't think it turned out very well. Maybe I was having extrusion problems, that is possible. But I did print the Sunlu PLA on the CR-10, as I've written down right here. And I think it printed out way better and partially because, look how shiny that is. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Um, that's because of the glass bed on the CR-10. And I'll tell you what, man, you just print straight glass. You wash that glass, you don't ever touch it or breathe on it or even look at it and you print right on it with PLA and it just, 
it just pops right off. And it, it sticks and then it will pop right off. It's amazing. Here's one printed in the 3D Fuel Pro PLA. And this stuff is supposed to be like super strong for PLA and has just just amazing. It's supposed to be basically the best, the best you can get. I will say I love printing with this, just the way that it prints, the way that it looks. It, ha it, it comes out really nice and shiny. And here we have the Clearly Natural 3D Fuel Workday PLA. And this stuff really is like, it's clear, man. I mean, you, you know, you can kind of, you can still see the, the individual lines, um, but it is, it is clear and it's, it looks so good. It looks so good. Here's what it looks like uh, with the propellers in there. Look at that. You can see the propeller hubs. I think that is just fantastic. Also on the back, super shiny mirror finish because of that glass, just fantastic. Now you may have noticed one of the things that is different about this print, it's basically exactly the same design except for one minor change, which is I have added a little rounded section on each of the sort of uh, support sections. So instead of it being squared off at the end, I went ahead and rounded it off because it was bothering me because that, you know, having that squared off piece, I didn't like that. Otherwise, this is exactly how it was before in terms of the actual physical design. Now, with the printing in Cura, in the slicer, what I did is I reduced the number of walls. So the actual lines around the perimeter is reduced in the new version. Basically, this way, the outer perimeter lines don't make this sharp point when they meet up with the circle. So now I have like a little bit more of actual bottom layer that that goes around the inner perimeter circle. Um, and I think that will make it a little bit stronger and kind of reduce those sharp angles. That's the theory anyway. Wow, look at that shininess. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. All right, let's assemble some propeller hubs and get out there and test these guys out. Let me know which one you think is going to win. I don't think the, the Sunlu PLA is going to fare very well. And one more thing here in this particular test, I want to use the full size propeller. I don't want to chop it down like I did in the last one. So I'm going to mount the motors on the top of the quadcopter so that we have more clearance in order to use the full length of the five inch propellers, which will actually make it more like six inch propellers, which could cause things to catch on fire. So hopefully it won't, but let's see if it does. There's one little teeny tiny thing that I did not take into account, which is that this propeller, because it's longer now than a normal five inch propeller, will run into this propeller. So, <laughs> whoops, pull this off so I can work on this motor and take it out and put a spacer in. First test flight with these, the slightly newer version of the propeller hub and clearly natural PLA, four cell battery, really, really sketchy setup. This is going to be really crazy, probably. Okay, so let's get into air mode, and we'll just start things out nice and easy. Nice and easy, baby. It's the name of the game. Ooh, these sticks feel so, um... Oh my gosh, this does not sound good at all. I don't have a good feeling about this time. <laughs> oh. oh, it sounds so, so bad. I hope it looks cool. It sounds horrible. It flies really badly. Again, it's very in unbalanced. Imbalanced. It's very unbalanced. It's really ridiculous. But it is flying though. Which is cool. But we already realized that. Like we knew that it flew before. So that's not exactly a new thing. Can we fly through here? Say hi to the chickens. The new chickens. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is very, very difficult to fly. Oh wow. 
Can we orbit? Let's try orbiting. We can kind of orbit. Nothing's on fire yet. Oh, okay. So this this is actually really good because, as far as I can tell, the propeller hubs are doing totally fine, and um, and they are actually being put under more stress because propellers are a little bit longer, so they're a little bit heavier, which means there's going to be a little bit more force, maybe a lot bit more force pulling out, uh, trying to break the propeller hub, and so far, they're all doing fine, but. I got kind of carried away and distracted from the main purpose of this test. In this case, the actual task is doing great, but my little side project, which is mounting the GoPro there to get that super cool shot, is not going so great because the motor underneath it is getting too hot, um, which really is just because the motor is trash and it's a mismatch motor and motor bell. So I'm gonna have to go back to a different configuration because it's just causing too much heat. Okay. All right, we're gonna go into acro mode here. Again, it is kind of poorly balanced. Balance is not great, but let's just do some flying around. Maybe try and capture some cool stuff. I'm seeing some more vibration. Pretty cool. Getting some fog on the lens, a little moisture. So far, these things are doing great, super great. And our 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 super sketchy GoPro attachment method seems to be working well so far. I mean, honestly, I, I don't think we're gonna break these. I don't know. Okay, we're gonna have to try and do a few more little extreme maneuvers. This transmitter, it feels a little different, so I have to choke up on it more. Uh, I have to choke up more on this i6S transmitter because it's a little fatter. So in order to get the full throttle... Oh shoot, oh shoot. Oh, dang it. Oh, shoot. We're gonna go check that out. Oof. The quadcopter landed right here. But where are the motors? Oh. Ah. Uh, oh, hey, we did break something, so that's good. That concludes this test of this type of propeller hub. Well, oh, ha. Woo, here it is. Well, this one's intact. Okay, this is kind of a monumentous occasion this is the first time i've put 3d printed propeller hub on my main quadcopter my nice quadcopter black um 3d fuel pro pla 3d printed hubs i'm not going to bother setting up the camera the camera to so i can talk while i'm doing this because we're getting some rain and stuff so i'm just going to fly maybe play some music we'll see so i'm going to fold these out because these are pretty tight
that's what happens when you get greedy. Don't, don't get greedy. I, I, you know what it is? These propellers, these propellers, these things are just flying so good that I, I just keep forgetting that we're actually supposed to be testing them out and we're not just flying around because that's what I wanted to do. So I broke my first ND filter here. So that's, that's special, special moment. Okay, no more playing around. We're just gonna do some testing. We're gonna take these motors, spin them around really fast and see what happens to the propeller hubs. Here we go. some pretty uh pretty crazy moments there but um oh okay a little little warm the motors are a little toasty kind of yeah, as to be expected this is kind of a heavy setup plus heavy propellers as far as the spin i'm gonna call it spin weight um they're they're golden though like i think they're go oh wait 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 okay okay i do see here Ooh, very interesting right here on one of them we'll take a closer look at this it is bowed out a little bit i've unplugged the battery by the way and taking a closer look at this it does appear that the entire top plate is bowing upwards it could be that the actual pegs that go in the propeller hubs are not the same height as the center support section Okay, we're trying out the Sunlu PLA Plus. This one is printed on the CR10. This one's printed on the Ender 3. And it's getting worse and windy, so let's try this out. I don't have high hopes.
Okay. Um, <sighs> that was pretty exciting. Let's get another pack on and maybe fly one more. <laughs> We got it to break. Man, I'm glad to see you. All right, I gotta make a real mount for you. I am so sorry, GoPro. I am so sorry. I will make a real mount for you so you don't have to keep departing like this. Of course, I tried to do that again for real world testing purposes. Our quadcopter here, things seem okay. You know, when it breaks, you can't uh, recover from that. That is how we learn. That is an important thing. I mean, you think about, you know, you think about like the best some of the best pilots, freestyle racing pilot. You think they haven't totally smashed GoPros and lenses and propellers and batteries and frames? Nah, they do the most smashing. And that is why they're the best. So I just got a little bit better today by breaking things. You know, the great thing about breaking stuff is like, it's pretty easy to tell when you're, when, when the session's over, because it's broken. That is how you can end a flying session and be totally satisfied. Ooh, what's this? Dang, look at that. Whoa. We found it. We found it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's a perfect match. Wow, that was a really fun time. Let's talk about what we learned and go through some of that sweet, sweet, juicy, slow motion flight footage. So it turns out that, or it looks like, it appears from these tests that the propeller hub will not actually break in normal use for, for the limited use that we put it through. So it only broke on impact with something like this one broke a lot. And uh, that's, that's huge, that's, that's a really big deal. Now, that could be because of the better filament, the stronger filament, or, and or, it could be because of how it was printed. Like, there's, there's no doubt that it actually works. I think a lot of the issues that I was having, like you can see in the slow-mo, with the uh, motor shaking, the vibration, a lot of that stuff was due to a, terrible motors, and B, when I didn't have the terrible terrible motors, it was just due to the propellers being different. There, Some are bent up, some are cut differently, some are longer, some are shorter, so basically in terms of like balancing this whole propeller hub assembly, it, there's no such thing. Like what? What's balancing? Even the cheap PLA Plus, the Sunlu PLA Plus I got for, from Amazon for I think like around $25. I did not have high expectations for it, although it was wound the best, so it had the best kind of presentation, I would say. That actually does perform pretty well, or at least way better than the Overture PLA that I was using, which was just regular PLA. And as far as the 3D Fuel PLA, that stuff was great because it was just, it was great to print with, it was very nice quality, and especially, I love the Clearly Natural PLA. 3D Fuel has different uh, series of filaments. So the idea is like the standard stuff is your basic PLA. It's not really for any kind of structural situations. Workday is like stronger and better quality, but like not the best quality. And then your Pro PLA is supposed to be like top of the line, like the best stuff that they make. And it's supposed to be very strong because they're saying that you can anneal them. So they are annealable. So you can actually put them in an oven and basically bake them um, under certain parameters. And then you take them out of the oven and they will actually be harder and stronger than before. Now I, ha I haven't actually tested this out and you could certainly do this. That, that would probably be a, a great solution to the strength factor. Although I do think that they would probably be more brittle after they've been annealed. I'm not sure though, because I'm not a scientist. Now, speaking of science, I am not Stefan, and this is not CNC Kitchen. Most of these tests are very subjective and anecdotal, but they are still real world tests. We also learned that crashing is painful, but good, because it's through those crashes that you're going to learn things like 
what breaks and what doesn't break and also what to do and not do. So like now I know I need to be more careful about when I try and do that little inverted flyby where I go and then I go under the branches because apparently what I'm seeing in the camera is a little off from what's actually happening in real life. So I need to give myself a little bit more space and practice up on that. Another thing that I need to do is print a real GoPro mount. Mostly it did work really well, uh, but it did come off a couple times. I still don't recommend it though, because you could get it stuck like on a roof or in a tree. Oh, that would be so bad. Now we get to the best part of this whole thing. The GoPro footage is fantastic. Um, it didn't look super great today because like we had like, a cloudy day and we didn't have good sunshine and I didn't want to take the ND filter off because that's what was protecting the, the lens, which is a really good idea that I didn't do that. So the, it looked a little dark and everything, but man, the stabilization and the slow-mo that you can do with it, it's just, it, it's just fantastic. I, I'm, I so enjoy flying around with it because once I get done flying, I get to see in amazing detail, and this is not a GoPro ad, how it looked. It's just, I love, I love it, I love it. Like when the motors just popped off of this thing, um, that's like what we were talking about in a previous video about motor retention because I did not have the C-clips to hold the motor bell onto the motor. And that's why you can see when the quad landed, just bam, that energy went back up through those through those uh, motor rotors and uh, it just, those things just flew off of there. I mean, like they literally just woo, flew away. And then we ended up with uh, this really messed up uh, motor bearing. And then there were a few times when the GoPro decided to race the quadcopter to the ground. We accidentally got some uh, unintentional third person view shots of the quadcopter. That was really cool actually because the GoPro managed to stay on for the first part of the crash and then you can just you can see it just slipping right out of out of there and it's like oh no it's like falling off of a, of a you know an airplane without a parachute or something and you can actually see the quadcopter uh, still falling to the ground as the GoPro is laying on the ground there so that's I thought that was pretty cool. And of course the slow-mo was great for not just looking cool, it especially makes a difference in being able to see what happens during a crash. 120 frames per second like really helps a lot. And of course, how about that shot of the uh, the quadcopter when I had it set up in the other configuration, having the GoPro on the, where the motor would be, or where the motor is, but just above the motor. I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know if I've seen that uh, anywhere else, but let me know what you thought of that type of shot because it'd be, it'd be really neat to redo that. Um, one of the problems with that, aside from the the mismatched motor causing a ton of friction and getting super hot because that wouldn't happen with a proper motor setup. But one of the problems is the balance. So I had the battery on the opposite arm to counteract the, ba uh, counteract the weight of the quadcopter, but that still leaves you with a bunch of weight over here and a bunch of weight over here. And then your quadcopter is, you know, trying to balance all that uh, for you which causes all the motors to have to do a lot more work and it just doesn't fly very well, but it was a pretty cool shot. So let me know what you think of that. Now you might be wondering, can I get those files to print my own? And the answer is yes, of course you can. Within the spirit of 3D printing and the sharing is caring and open source saucity, I am going to be making these uh, files available for you to download. So check the description. If you're watching this on YouTube, check for a link in the description to my website, RC with Adam. And if you're at my website, it's the link, the download file link is going to be in the description on my website. I hope that was confusing enough. Now I will provide the STL file. And also I think the Cura file and maybe even a G code file, which I'm not sure if that will work. It may or may not work on your printer, so it's up to you to figure that out. Uh, I forgot to weigh these actually, so we're going to find out how much one of these weighs right now. 10 grams, Ooh, wow, 
Wow. Wow. Again, again, the point of this whole project is not to make something that is incredibly well performing, but really it's just to try a new idea because that is really fun and you can learn a lot from doing that. I mean, personally, I've learned a ton about using Fusion 360 and other types of CAD software just from this project out of necessity to actually create what I want to create. Also, it's really cool to be able to reuse things and you know, just in case you had to reuse your propellers, this would be a really cool way of doing it. So what's next for this design? Well, what I want to do is I want to go in and lighten it up. I want to reduce some of the material, get some of the weight down and kind of start to shrink it back until I get, until I start getting more failures and then dial it back up a little bit. That's kind of the plan. I also want to kind of smooth it out a little bit. Now, if you'd really like to try out this propeller hub design, but you don't have a 3D printer, but you're like, man, that looks really cool. I want to try those out. I fly a ton. That would be useful. Email me at rcwithadam at gmail.com because I will, uh, we'll say the first five people to email me, I will send you a set for free so that you can kind of be like a beta tester. All that I ask is that you give me some feedback on how it worked for you um, and kind of keep track of like, let, just let me know what your setup is, what propellers you're using, that sort of thing. And just credit RC with Adam with the design anytime you use it in like a video or something like that. That's it. And from the legal department, if you use these files to print your own propeller hubs or if I send you some or anything like that, Use them at your own risk. This is not a guaranteed to work design. It is involving propellers, which are sharp blades that are spinning around like a blender. So you have to be careful. Please don't sue me. Well, there you go, everybody. We revisited the propeller hub design. I think we improved it quite a bit. We got to see some super awesome slow-mo and crashes, which is always fun. And I'm looking forward to continuing on this design, this project. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for your time. Appreciate you. If you like this video, you will probably love this other video right over here. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And I will see you again very soon.